while all this is happening and the bottom is falling out from the Republicans' massive red wave dreams, where is the man who is charged with making sure Republicans secure a majority in the Senate? Senator Rick Scott, let's go ahead and put this up on the screen. <laughs> he's not just this says Rick Scott's ill-timed Italian vacation. As you were pointing out, Sarah, it's not yeah. just that he's in Italy. Right. He's literally on a super yacht yes. in Italy, very clear that somebody on his side leaked this to right. Axios, right? Who's like pissed off about the fact that he is nowhere to be found, um, is apparently not engaged in the fact that, you know, things are kind of, the wheels are coming off. Um, there's always been criticism of him that, he, you know, this, he's more interested in his own vanity than being a team player. And the really funny thing here, because this is the guy, he's the chair of the National Republican Senatorial Com Committee, the other thing that's really funny here is that he had sent out a tweet literally the week when he is on the deck of this super yacht in Italy. Um, he sent out this tweet that said, another week of President Biden vacationing in Delaware versus working at the White House. If he loves to travel so much, I've got some suggestions as to where he should go next. And he's got like the border, the southern border yes. listed a bunch of times. Um, so he's criticizing <sighs> Biden for vacationing in Delaware while he is on a super yeah. yacht in Italy. He is literally has his staff tweeting about Biden while he is on Imagine this. being shameless enough to do that. I can't, I honestly can't. <laughs> I mean, it's just amazing. Next like, level. Uh, yeah, how is this even possible? And look, as I just think the fact, look, a lot of people go to Italy. A lot of middle class folks. I, I would love uh, to go to Italy, Italy. never been. Not a big Euro guy, been to Italy a couple times Never. as we discussed. <laughs> It's fine, um, Positano, cool, haven't seen that before. Uh, more what I'm saying is that he goes there, gets on this super yacht, is not engaged in the midterms, and criticizing Biden for going to the gate. <laughs> it's like, come on, man, this is completely ridiculous. Also, here's what he says, quote, <laughs> This was his response. Senator Scott took a couple of days to celebrate his 50th wedding anniversary with his wife and family, a trip that was planned more than a year ago. Mm. They always say that if it, mm. listen, and this is what I always say to these folks. Rick Scott, you're worth $100 million. You could retire. You can you can go and live your life on that go yacht. Go do the super if yacht you like all to. you want. None of us would care. I mean, you know, <laughs> outside of the fact that, you know, Medicare fraud and all that, but that's a separate conversation. Fine. You go live your life as a rich guy. You chose to sign up for the U.S. Senate, and you chose, furthermore, to elevate yourself to the top of Republican chances. Is it so much to ask that you do your job? Is it so hard? I can't even dream of the idea of taking a vacation from the show if we were about to go into a major thing like this. Yes. It'd be insane right. uh, to consider it. So it's like, <laughs> yeah, this is one, you know, one thousandth as important as supposedly is what these guys say. So first of all, he's on the vacation. What did we also talk about, Crystal? This guy is being called on for an audit because they burned through a couple hundred million dollars oh, right. where over the last six months drained their bank accounts. No discernible effort, reason. It's not like the polls are going on that well. And now they need cash hardcore. A, uh, a t leaked tape of the GOP uh, chairwoman, Ronna McDaniel, actually just came out this morning where it was fed to a political reporter where she sent a tape to donors. She was like, hey, we need cash wow. to contest the Senate, like now, immediately. Wow. Part of the issue too, Trump is sucking up all this yes. money out of the Republican base. They're not giving to the NRSC. They're giving to Trump in order to, quote, fight back against the FBI. So, and he doesn't give a damn about the midterm no, elections at all. So, not. you know, he could care less about whether they win or not. And then you've got all of these candidates who have never run before, yeah. who don't know how to fundraise, yeah, who apparently. don't have that established political like fundraising network. And uh, let me tell you, someone who has done some political fundraising uh, a while back, it sucks. And if you've never done it before and you aren't the kind of like weird freaks that inhabit this city mm -hmm. who apparently like dialing for dollars with rich people all day <sighs> long, like it is a freaking grind. And so I think a lot of these folks thought that they could just like show up, go to the, you know, go to the event, send down some tweets, do a Fox News appearance. They didn't know that what a campaign really is for these candidates is sitting on a phone in an office begging for dollars right. day in and day out. And should our system be that way? No. It's horrific that that is the way that it is. It's terrible for the candidates and it's really terrible for the country. 
But yeah, especially since a lot of these candidates are behind the eight ball in terms of the polling, they're behind. They need to have a cash advantage going into, you know, post Labor Day when things really ramp up because they've got to sort of flood the airwaves and make the case to overcome the negative ratings that they have accrued over this period when Democrats have sort of been aggressively out there prosecuting the case against them. So um, early on, The NRSC had a big cash advantage. It looked like they had this huge war chest that Democrats were going to be in a really poor position. And now we're in a place where they are pulling ads from the airwaves in critical battleground states. And we're in a place where they're having to spend money in states like Ohio, where they never thought that they were going to have to come in with a rescue plan. And it's a lot of money, too. I think it's like $28 Mm -hmm. million or something that Mitch McConnell's having to put into Ohio in order to try to make sure that J.D. Vance ultimately wins there, which I fully expect that he will. But I'm sure they did not go into this year thinking they were going to have to spend tens of millions of dollars to get J.D. Vance across the finish line No, they certainly did not think that at all. Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society, and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.